Hi, if you've never heard about the Cubase Ranger track before, then you're in for a treat. Because especially in the phases where you're still writing, producing, arranging, or even remixing a project, it's super useful. And even if you've heard about the Ranger track before, hang in there because this video is a deep dive, so you're probably going to learn something new. So let's go. Now about a year ago I already made a video on this channel about the Cubase Arranger track, but unfortunately I got a copyright claim on it, so I had to remove it, totally my own fault by the way. But that also gives me the opportunity to redo this video in a better way of course. And because I don't want to run into that same problem again in this video, as an example I'm using music from a service called Streambeats, which provides free, copyright free music for content creators. I'll have a link in the description so check it out. Now normally when you play a project in Cubase, it plays from start to finish. But the Arranger track provides you a way to indicate certain sections which should be repeated, skipped, rearranged in their order without having to copy events or parts of the project all over the place. So let's check it out in Cubase. Now to add an Arranger track, I want to add it just below the Marker track over here in the top part. You can click plus, select more tracks and select Arranger track. Now on the Arranger track you can have events and those indicate certain sections of the song. You can add them by using the draw tool over here and just draw in wherever you want to have a certain event in the Arranger track. You can rename them over here, for example like this, or also in the inspector here, but then you need to alt double click the name and then you can rename it. However, you can see that there's already a marker track in this project and maybe it makes more sense to have the arranger events align with the various sections that are indicated in the marker track. So let's get rid of these. I just push delete on my keyboard. Now, unfortunately, there's not a direct way to convert markers to arranger events, but there's a bit of a shortcut. For example, I can double click on this intro cycle marker here and you can see that the left and right locators are then positioned around the cycle markers and if I then double click in the arranger track an arranger event is created. So let me do that for a number of these song sections, name them correctly and let's imagine that I may also want to use half of the verse so I can do an overlapping arranger event here and maybe I'll call that verse 1.2 and if I make the arranger track a bit bigger you can actually directly see the title over here. Now what you can do with these arranger events is play them back very easily. Let's have a look and I've also added an arranger event for the count in section by the way so you can basically use these little play buttons in front of the arranger event to play it back. And as you can see, by default, it just repeats the arranger event that you selected for play. However, while one event is playing, you can always indicate what next event should play and then it'll turn orange until it starts playing. For example, like this. So after the first event has played, it will move on to the next one, but that behavior is actually determined by the jump mode in the inspector, which you can set over here, which is now set to end, but you can for example also set it to two bars, and that means that the next selected event will play after two bars of the previous event has played. Let me demonstrate that, for example let's start with the first one. Yeah, so this is a very easy way if you want to really dig into one of the sections of a song, keep playing it over and over, for example, because you're fleshing it out, rehearsing it, or practicing it with a singer for recording, and then move on to the next one. Now, instead of having to push those play buttons all the time, it's also possible to pre-program a certain order of events. You can even do that in the inspector, but it's easier in the arranger editor, which we will look at next. But before we do that, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And I noticed that most of you watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel yet. So please consider also pushing the subscribe button and maybe even the little bell icon so you get notified when I publish another video. 
And if you really want to support the channel, you can always use the super thanks button below the video or the affiliate links in the description if you want to buy anything at one of these stores. If you do so after clicking one of the affiliate links, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you and that's very much appreciated. But let's now check out the arranger editor. And you can open the arranger editor by pushing the E over here on the arranger track, which shows you that you're editing arranger chain one over here. And these are your available arranger events. And you can now drag and drop them to the arranger chain over here. For example, let's start with count in, then immediately go to the second half of verse one, and then maybe immediately go to the chorus. So because my arranger mode is now active, I can start playback and it will follow the current arranger chain. I snuggle up close to the shell I'm living in And if I let you in Another round begins And no What if you're everything I need I find my If I disable the arranger mode, which I can do over here Or also on the arranger track over here Then my project will just play in a linear way like we're used to So the whole arranger chain is ignored in that case. So let's turn it on. And you can also specify repeats of a certain section. For example, maybe I want to repeat this twice. Then you can see that there's also a counter over here which shows you which repeat you're busy with. When you play back. Now there's also the repeat mode, which is currently set to normal and then the behavior is just like you saw. But if I set it to repeat forever, then it will just keep repeating this section until you click another event in the arranger editor or until you click play once again. If you set it to pause after repeats, then the playback will pause after having played count in twice. And then you can manually start playback of another arranger event. Now a very nice feature is that it also shows the entire song time of your current arranger chain. You can use that for example for extended remixes which tend to be longer than the original song. Or maybe for a radio edit which is usually shorter and then you can already preview the length of that shorter version. Now there's also some buttons on top here. Let me just add a few more events to this arranger chain. Because these buttons can be used to navigate through the current arranger chain. And these buttons can be used to move between repeats within the current arranger event. You can also rename the current arranger chain if you want to. You can add another arranger chain. So now I have two. You can also duplicate the current arranger chain. Then it's called arranger chain one copy. And for example, well, I could get rid of that verse 1.2 in here maybe. And then I have another arranger chain with other arranger events. But let's get rid of those two new ones. So that we're back to one arranger chain. Now all of this editing of an arranger chain is very easy in this arranger editor, but you can actually also do it in the inspector. Let me show you. If you select the arranger track, you see that the current arranger chain is now also here on top. Here you can again select the arranger chain that you work on. You can rename the chain, create a new chain, duplicate it. And from over here you can drag arranger events into the currently selected arranger chain. You can also specify the repeats over here and the repeat mode like you could in the arranger editor. Now at a certain point when you've used the arranger track you may decide that you want to work in a more linear way again instead of having your project jump around all the time due to the arranger track and the arranger events. And that is possible by flattening the arranger track. For example if we work from the arranger editor, let's put this repeat mode to normal over here and now I have two times a count in, then I have a verse 1.2, a chorus, the full verse 1, another chorus and let's just get rid of these two last ones here and I can now choose flatten chain over here but I can also set the way in which this is done over here. As a source I can say which arranger chain I want to flatten, well there's only one now, let's actually name this remix. And then as a destination, I can say I want to flatten it in the current project or into a new project. Let's make it a new project. I can decide on the name of the new project and let's append the name of the chain 
to the current name of the project, which you can see over here is LS210 Cubase Ranger Track Revisited. But you can also just use the chain name only or add a certain number to the current project name. There are certain options. You can say, I want to keep the arranger track in the new project as well, but I intend to flatten it and then get rid of the arranger track. You can make real event copies or shared copies. And when you have shared copies, you can basically edit one event and it will edit the event in all the different places. So let's actually make real copies so that I can still more easily make some differences between the first chorus and the second time I repeat that same chorus. You can specify how MIDI events are split. And when you select this, it excludes MIDI notes that start before or are longer than the arranger event. Only MIDI notes that begin and end inside the arranger event are then taken into account. But there's no MIDI in this project, so it doesn't matter. And cascade new projects means that it will lay out the two projects in a cascaded way. But let's not do that because I want the new project to be laid out on screen exactly like this one. So it's in the right location for capturing by my screen capturing software. So with these options, let's flatten the chain. And Cubase now asks me whether I want to activate the new project. So yes, let's activate it. And as you can see over here, it has now created my new project. It has cut up the events in the way that I specified. It has also cut up the market track in the way that I specified. For example, over here, you can see if I zoom in a bit that I now have two count in sections, then a verse one, a chorus, another verse one and another chorus like I specified in the arranger chain called remix. And that arranger chain name is also appended to the project title like I specified. And the arranger track itself has disappeared because I specified that as well on the flattening options. So I now have a fully linear project again and I can work on the individual sections to make them more unique because obviously I now have repeats of exactly the same sections so they will sound exactly the same, which may not be what you want. So how can you use all of this in real life? Well, for one thing, I think it's ideal when you're working on a song, writing a song, maybe you have a verse and a chorus and you want to quickly repeat them to see how it feels in a certain order. You can also use it as an alternative for the market track, which I do quite a lot actually, because if you look at the market track versus the arranger track, you can see that the arranger track is much more colorful and maybe you find that those arranger events are much more easy to see than those markers, which are all in the same color. And of course it has the addition benefits of being able to quickly start playback from a certain section and if you don't want the actual arranger chain to be of any influence then you can just disable the arranger track and you're just left with a more colorful marker track now another way to use this is for example when you want to make an extended remix of a song it's very easy to repeat certain sections and see how that feels or a more shorter version of a song like a radio edit or a single edit. Again, very easy to cut out certain sections and see how that feels. And if you don't like it, you can just easily try it in another order. Now, are you also already using the arranger track or the arranger events? Let me know what you use it for, I'm very interested. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, then you really must like these deep dives into Cubase functionality. And I also made a similar video about the marker track, which I will link over here. Check it out, enjoy and see you soon.